going to sublimate on some coffee mugs. A lot of them. Not this particular graphic. This is my shop logo. I'm going to show you how I do it in a somewhat of a production setting. Coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the loft above the shop on a rainy summer day in July. Plenty warm out there and it's raining and it's a good time for me to be up here in the loft. I have a uh, craft show coming up in August and though I don't normally participate in craft shows I've been invited to do on in this particular one so I need to have some stuff and one of the things that are big sellers are custom coffee mugs. Um, I buy them by the case of 36 when I get into the mug mode as they call it and I can crank these out pretty good. Uh, the paper I'm going to be using today is from InnoSub USA it's in a package like this and it does have settings on the back. I have some custom settings I use that for the Vivor mug press I'm going to be using here and I'll demonstrate those. Uh, this paper comes in either 60 sheet or 120 sheet packages and it is very clearly marked on the back with a color watermark so you don't print on the wrong side. Some types of papers are not marked at all or maybe they're a very light pink and while they do work well you got to look pretty close when you start getting old eyeballs like I've got it uh, can be a little tough to tell. The only uh, problem I've ever had with this was with this package when they uh, put it together at the factory I guess I got a little carried away with the glue I had to actually rip the package apart because the glue had bled off and got onto the side of the plastic inside and I couldn't get the stuff out but otherwise this stuff works great and you'll be getting to see how well it works. So the next question I get all the time is how do you make your graphics? How do you know what size to make them? So what I do here is I make, take my cup and I take a tape a tape like this. Uh, tailor's tape, they call it a crafter's tape. It's flexible. It's kind of like this. I place it on the handle with the end of it right up against the handle there. And then I just wrap it around and I can see how far it is all the way around it. This is called a circumference if you weren't paying attention in math class. Uh, so it's nine and a half inches. A piece of uh, regular sublimation paper, eight and a half by eleven, is eight and a half. So that's exactly what I'm going to use. And the other thing I will be doing when we get into doing this, so, so we will need to have half of nine and a half, and I'll make that mark with a pencil very lightly right at the top and the bottom of the mug so I can get my graphics centered. Now, I'll be showing you that here coming up. So let me take you onto the computer here. I use a program called Inkscape to uh, get all my graphics lined up and made. So we'll head over there and you can take a look at how I get this laid out. Okay, so here is one of the graphic sheets I'm making up. This here will do two mugs. I'm doing uh, two of these per sheet. If I would go to my 8.5 by 14, I could do three. But this is what we're going to use to uh, demonstrate this into some paper here. And I've got quite a few projects to do. So how do I get all this laid out? Well, the first thing you need to do is measure the circumference of your mug and the ones I'm using from one side of the handle to the other side of the handle around the outside is nine and a half inches. Well, this is eight and a half inches wide paper, so that will work out very well for that. The height of my mug is four inches, but I do not like to use the entire height of the mug, so I have my graphics set at three and a half. So we'll show you how I make one of these up here to file and new and I'm using a program called Inkscape which is free, it's free download and I need to do some document properties here because by default it's A4 I want to go to US letter in inches and I'm going to do this in inches since most of my viewers are from the US I also frequently work with M&Ms that's metric, not the candy, although I do like those too. So we got that all set. Up here to view, I want my page grid. That way I can lay out my graphic better. 
So there's a couple different ways you can do this, bring your graphics in. Um, I'm going to just drag this in and drop it. I'll bring that up here where I want it. And you see this is why I like to use the page grid. It lets me lay everything out so I keep everything straight. So I need to copy and paste this and you can do it from the keyboard or you can do it here. We can right click and copy and right click and paste. There's my other one. We'll bring them up. Need to resize that. You'll see up here little padlocks unlocked. We need to lock that to keep proportions correct. And I'll change my height to 3.5. I should have done this before I did the copy and paste, but this works too. So you see where the outlines are here, where they fall on the grid. Move this guy out just a little bit. Whoop, too far. And that one is too low, so we need to bring him up. So you see, they are both now on the same upper and lower line as you look at the outline of the graphic. And I've got three little squares over here. I've got three little squares over here, so we're centered. So there is my first graphic. I'll bring in another one. Now this time I'll scale this one first. Want our height to 3.5. Now I'll just bring this over here so that is three squares out. Right click. Copy. Right click. Paste. And you can use the arrows on your keyboard to move the graphics around. I would say I need to move this one up. We are three from the edge. We are three from the edge. And this one here will be ready to print. So I just do a file. Save as. And we are going to call this one Mugs 2. So this will be ready to send to the printer. Okay, now to print this. I go up here to File print. And it's going to come up with my Sawgrass Print Manager, but I'm going to be using my Epson 2720 right here. I go to Preferences and people I've mentioned. I can have all these preset, but I do a bunch of different things, so I do not want a preset. And the advantage of this is it makes me look at this every time, so I do not make a mistake. Quiet mode I turn off. Always click on Print Preview because I want to see this first. Of course, orientation is portrait, quality high, my paper type on the sublimation paper is from InnoSub, and with all my sublimation papers, I use premium presentation paper matte as a setting. Okay, I then go to more options. We need to mirror this. Make sure high speed is turned off or you will not get as good of a graphic. So from here I just click OK. I click on print and this will bring up my print preview. As you can see everything is mirrored. I just need to hit print and send it to the printer. The mug press I'm going to be using for this is uh, going to be this Vivor unit right here. After I get all my uh, graphics cut and I'll show you how we do that and everything. But the uh, reason I'm using this is because it's fully automatic. I do have another mug press over there from Tussie which works just fine. And if you are using that type of mug press and you want to know some settings, temperature is 385 degrees for 180 seconds for using the type of uh, mug press where you need to set your time and temperature on. This is not really set up to be able to read the exact times and temperatures, but as uh, I've been using this and fiddled with the different settings on it, I've got it to where it comes out perfect every time. 
The mugs I'm going to be using are sublimation blanks. Don't just like run down a Dollar Tree or your local Wally World or Target or whatever and grab a bunch of mugs off the shelf and think you're going to sublimate to them. is isn't going to work. You need actual sublimation mug. These are 11 ounce mugs. And they come in a little, I guess you could call it a gift box. And they are wrapped in plastic. There's a coating on here to accept the, the dye sublimation. If you do not have that coating on there, it won't work. Another thing to remember when you're putting your graphic on and getting your layout done, is to make sure you put it on the right side up because I made that mistake once. I also clean these before I put my artwork on them. And I, for that I just use alcohol and I don't mean rum. I use the stuff. And a neat little tip is uh, if you have a Dollar Tree in your area, they've got these little uh, pump dispensers. I think they're actually made for makeup. A uh, little flip lid. I fill these with alcohol. Take a paper towel. And as you pump this, it puts the solution, in this case alcohol, under the paper towel and you can go ahead and clean your project up. These are really handy for a lot of different things. You're going to have a you know alcohol one or maybe something else. Another one I'd label them, but I use this one just for alcohol. That's the only one I have up here. Now you don't have to go crazy with this either. Just want to make sure there's no uh, manufacturing lint or anything on it. That's all you need to do. Okay, the actual measurement of the mug in height is three and three quarters. So I cut my will cut my paper to be able to put the graphic on there and get it laid out and centered. I can either do it right at three and three quarters or I can back it down a little bit. In this case I'm going to back it down to about three and three eighths because I'm using at least on this particular graphic. If you're using one of these cutters make sure that this cutting wheel does not slide across anywhere on your graphic because it will ruin it. It'll pull the coating and uh, it'll mess up your ink. So this is cut nice and straight and it's ready to go on to the cup, or mug in this case. These are made by Cricut. I mean, I, I suppose there's some other companies that make them too, but they are extremely handy for this type of thing, especially when you have a lot of them to do. Uh, when we're doing our uh, glass trivets, I have to cut a tremendous amount of vinyl. And I, this gets a lot of use. And this wheel is replaceable when you make it dull from using it too much. So there's how they lay out. I'll show you how we get them centered on a mug. So what I do to get these perfectly centered, I go above the handle and where the two pieces meet, where the end and the meets here is 10 inches. So I go over here to the 5 mark. I just make a little pencil mark at the very top of the mug. Then I can go down and do exactly the same thing on the bottom. That way I know where my center point is. Yeah, in the back of your graphic, I'm using a little metal ruler here, it's just eight and a half wide, so half of that is four and a quarter. So let's make a couple little tick marks on the back at four and a quarter. I can take my cup, look for my marks. There again make sure you're doing it right side up. Like I say, I made that mistake once. Once was enough. So you can line your little tick marks up there. Get it straight around the cup. So it's even. You'll have a gap, like so at the end. You just take a couple pieces of heat tape. Make sure the graphic is tight against the cup and straight all the way around. It's so a heat tape there, piece there, and that is ready for the mug press. Now I'm going to get a whole bunch of these prepped before I get the uh, mug press cranked up. So we've got one dropped into the heat press here, the mug press, and we'll just let it run. And i got a whole bunch more to do. Okay, just opened up. Take this one out, let it cool off, and put another one in. 
let it do its thing. I'll be pulling this when it cools off some. If you try to pull these too early, the image can actually ghost. So I like to let them cool off. And something you can do with these is you don't need to have gloves on necessarily if you grab it by the handle. I'll set that one off to the side to cool. We'll drop another one in. And let it run. I got one of these is cool here enough that I can grab onto it without getting burned. We'll just pull the paper off. I'll get in focus here. So I'm fine. The rest of you need therapy. Okay, I mentioned earlier if you pull the paper too soon, it'll get what's called ghosting. This is ghosting. Hopefully you, that you can see that. Maybe if I get it up here close enough, or if the camera will even focus on that, you see where the it looks a little blurry. It's almost like almost three dimensional. Uh, so this one won't be going to the show. This will be. Just up here for the loft for my coffee, I guess. Although I do like the phrase on it. That's what they call ghosting. And it looks like we opened up and we're ready for another one here. There again, like I said, if you're grabbing it by the handle, you don't need gloves. Another one ready to go. So here's the first round of them all done and uh, ready to box up, take to that show. And as you can see, I had absolutely fantastic color transfer and everything worked out right. I did have ghosting on one as I showed because I tried to tow the graphic off too soon and I know better. But otherwise, uh, everything here comes out perfect. That in a sub paper works fine, it does not stick. Uh, I've got good color transfer. And the Vivor Mug Press makes this really quick and easy because it's automatic and I don't have to stand there and babysit it. So that's how I do mugs in a kind of a semi-production setting. Um, as they are running in the press, I'm getting other cups prepped and getting the graphics taped on and taking the tape off of the other ones that have cooled down and I'll be boxing these up to take to the show as I mentioned. Uh, the cups Sublimation blanks, again, don't just go down to Dollar Tree or Dollar General or something. Just grab some mugs off the shelf and think you're going to sublimate to them. That doesn't work. You need sublimation blanks, as they're called. They have a special coating on them. You will need sublimation ink in an inkjet printer and sublimation paper. Some people use copy paper. And yeah, it, it kind of works. Uh, this InnoSub paper is very, very easy to use. The watermark on the back is very large. You can't mistake and print on the wrong side of it or anything. Fantastic uh, ink transfer and very, very little left on the paper. So that's working out perfect. Uh, there'll be links in the description for everything. Uh, these mugs, the uh, mug press I used, uh, my Epson 2720 printer, the ink I used, of course the uh, you know, sub paper. So if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments there. Otherwise, uh, if you got something out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. I'm Roger in the loft. Lots of mugs. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.